if we have our clerk available for roll call. The host would like you to unmute to... your microphone. You can press star you six be calling to right unmute. Hello, you are unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, Chloe. Go for it. Hi, sorry. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Uh, roll call. Councilmember Bertrand. I believe he is absent this evening. Councilmember Kaiser. Here. Councilmember Peterson. Here. Vice Mayor Story. Here. And Mayor Brooks. Here. Thank you. And Chloe, do you want to share a few words about our meeting this evening? Yes. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Uh, hello. Welcome to the Capitola City Council meeting in accordance with California Governor Executive Order N2920. The meeting is not physically open to the public. Council and staff are meeting via Zoom, and there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting using Zoom or a landline or mobile phone, along with how to submit public comment during the meeting tonight, is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, and on the published meeting agenda. The public can also live stream the meeting on our website. As always, the meeting is also cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Our technician this evening is Walter. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, Walter. You can please all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We're now going to move on to item two. This is presentation. This is a proclamation for October 2021 College and Career Awareness Month, and I have the pleasure of presenting this this evening to a special guest here to receive it. Dr. De La Serta, are you available? Yes, I am. How are you doing, Mayor Brooks and City Council? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us today. I have the pleasure of introducing our mayor's proclamation um, on behalf of the entire city and myself. Um, for College and Career Awareness Month um, is observed in October throughout Santa Cruz County, including Cabrillo College, and that's why we ask for you to be here today in collaboration with school districts and in North and South County and businesses throughout all career sectors. I could go on and on about the wonderful things that this proclamation um, shares, but most of all, what it does is it encourages and supports the work of Cabrillo College and helping students um, navigate different career paths throughout the county. So now, therefore, I, Yvette Brooks, Mayor for the City of Capitola, makes the proclamation to raise awareness of the importance of higher education in support of College and Career, career Awareness Month. Thank you so much. Dr. De La Serta, would you like to say a few words? It would be my honor. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Brooks. Thank you, city council members. Uh, thank you to the city of Capitola as well. Uh, a true honor for to be part of a recognition which I think unites the area uh, in the county uh, where all four mayors are declaring this to, together with Mayor Brooks and your city council. What a special occasion this is, a recognition of how important public education is to all, all communities and all families and students that we serve. Uh, we are so proud of our students. We are so proud of our alumni. We are so proud of our faculty and our staff, um, all of those that serve to help the next generation. And what's important about this proclamation is we're preparing the next generation of workforce for the local community in the nation. And I think, uh, you know, this is definitely apropos during a time when we celebrate diversity, equity, and inclusion of all. Um, we have grown tremendously as a Hispanic serving institution. We have grown to be an institution of collectivity and inclusion. 
Uh, we were happy to be awarded recently a, a new Title III Hispanic Serving Institution grant to help our students in the areas of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. So th those that live in Capitola, those students that attend Cabrillo will have a super advantage in regards to being able to take advantage of resources from the U.S. Department of Education and really help us advance our agenda when it comes to meeting the needs and the skills gaps in these fields. So I am just elated. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Thank you, City Council. On behalf of our Board of Trustees and our President, uh, Matt Westein, as you know, he's a huge champion uh, for our community. And I want to thank you as we work together to outreach and serve all of the students uh, in our community. So thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here tonight. We will get you a copy of this proclamation as well as with our other partners here. Um, thank you again. Gracias. Okay, we're gonna now move on to item three. This is for additional materials submitted to the city after the distribution of our agenda packet. Mayor Brooks, we did not receive any additional materials for this meeting. Okay, now we're gonna then move on to additions and or deletions to the agenda. Up no changes to the agenda this evening. Excellent. Now for item five, oral communications. This allows members of the public to address the city council on any consent item on tonight's agenda or any topic within the jurisdiction of the city that is not on our general government or public hearing sections of the agenda. Um, agenda. And then members of the public may speak for up to three minutes unless otherwise specified by myself. So we'll go ahead and open this up for um, oral communications. You have an opportunity now to uh, email us at public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us or you can speak uh, by, or, or you to speak, you can raise your hand now by clicking on reactions, then clicking raise hand in your Zoom application or by dialing star nine or star six, depending on your phone or landline. And we, our moderator will unmute you. Mayor Brooks, I do not see any attendees with their hands raised and I do not see any uh, emails for public comment or all communication. Right. Excuse me. Okay, so we'll now move on to item six then. This is uh, for staff or city council comments. We'll begin with staff. I have one short announcement for you this evening. As noted in the consent item on tonight's agenda about the pandemic, uh, last week at the end of the week, the governor signed AB 361. AB 361 will extend the, um, the exception to the Brown Act to allow virtual meetings, essentially out into the foreseeable future, uh, provided the city takes a few uh, procedural steps. So that option, you may recall, this was uh, the allowance for Brown in the Brown Act to meet virtually was set to expire at the end of this month. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Council member, are any other staff comments before we move to council? Okay, Vice Mayor Story. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Um, I just wanted to ask if, uh, if at one of our upcoming meetings, we could have on the general government agenda, uh, a discussion of the advisory committee on redistricting um, who are uh, now taking input on the questions about um, whether to uh, change um, the boundaries for our supervisorial district. Um, as many of you know, or, um, or, or may not know, Capitola currently straddles two super, supervisorial districts. Um, and I think this was, since this only happens once every 10 years, it would be a good uh, time for us to have a presentation about it and see if there's any members of the public or any residents of Capitola that would like to uh, give this council input uh, on um, that endeavor. But that's it. Thank you. And Vice Mayor, I heard you say that you wanted it on general government. Are you, are you actually, do you mean presentation since it would just be a presentation from the oh, redistricting no. committee? No, it's, it's, um, 
generally uh, the item eight. I think it should be more than just the presentation, um, which would be because that would be an opportunity for residents to uh, give input um, and for council members to have uh, ask questions and, and have some back and forth exchange. So the under section eight of our um, agenda, uh, which is general government slash public hearing. Okay. If um, this and this would be a presentation from the county that's already holding the redistricting meetings, if they would accept additional, because I know that they're having them already. So I was just curious, this would be above and beyond that for the city of Capitola specifically. Well, that'd be great if they're available to come um, and give a presentation. Um, otherwise, um, it would be you know the staff giving us a presentation and an update, um, awesome. or maybe them doing in conjunction. So. Okay, and then if not, I guess that what I would add is I also um, hold mayor town halls. So if they can't attend our next couple, because uh, I know they have some, a schedule of workshops uh, already out, so we can also be more flexible. We could offer a town hall for input to Jamie if that if the next couple council meeting dates don't work for them, so I could offer that as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, any other comments from council? No? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to item seven. This is consent. All items listed as consent will be enacted in one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussion on these items prior to the time of council. Um, if you'd like to pull the item for discussion, we could take this at a different time. Anyone need to pull an item? Vice Mayor Story? I wasn't going to ask to pull an item, but I did have a question um, about item F. And then, um, so at your discretion, uh, Mayor, whether you okay. want to ask the question or, or pull it for uh, more discussion. You know, I had a same note to, for that, to have that as uh, to get a little bit more clarity and information on that. So let's go ahead and pull that item and take it at um, the end or yeah, at the end. And I also would like to make an edit for item 7A. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull that item for edit. So anything else at this time? Okay, so we'll take a motion to approve consent items B through B, C, D, E, and G. Can we have a motion to approve B, C, D, E, and G? So moved. Can we have a first? Second, second. And a second. Okay. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Council Member Kaiser. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. Thank you. Okay, we're now going to move on to item 8A. This is to authorize the Public Works Department to apply for grant funding from the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission for road projects. And Mr. Jesberg, is this your item? It is. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Share my screen quickly here. So can you can see my screen at this point? So uh, the item for you is a call for projects from the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. And quick background, the uh, Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission has issued a call for transportation and program, transportation projects and programs. They have about $11 million in funding from a variety of sources, the state and federal sources that provide funding regionally to the, that the RTC then distributes. Um, eligible projects include street maintenance, bicycle and pedestrian improvements, and traffic management systems. Uh, based on past awards and uh, a population ratio, we anticipate the city will receive between 400,000 to maybe a million dollars. That would be quite a award if we were to get a million dollars, but uh, I would say that's the upper limit. 
potential project lists are included in the agenda packet a list of the regional transportation plan which is a list of projects the city has input on the rtc has input on ultimately kind of approved by the rtc and then mbag and it identifies projects that are um, eligible for uh, state and federal funding it's really a funding document so the, the agencies know how much funding is necessary for transportation projects and I think the city has you know, quite a few projects in there. Some are, are realistic and to be completed by 2045. Others are kind of more wish list items. Um, but those are the projects we tend to work off of. They do include, you know, a blanket street maintenance. So that's all the paving of it we want to do in the street. And then various other transportation projects like sidewalk projects. The staff went through this list and kind of our CIP uh, list that partially funded or funded projects and came up with uh, five projects that we think are worth considering at this point. The first is the 41st Avenue Pavement Rehabilitation Project. You know, we've been struggling to get uh, 41st repaved. The, the two main areas that need repaving now are the two intersections at 41st and Capitola Road and 41st at Clare Street. We'd also like to work on 41st Avenue from Clare Street um, to the city limits in the north, which is actually uh, over the, high, the Highway 1 bridge, kind of in front of uh, Home Depot, to where the city limit is there. So that's all our responsibility. We would not touch the bridge, the bridge itself. Um, that falls under Caltrans. So this project um, is something we've talked about, something that is needed. It has an advantage in that we can um, scale it depending on the size of the award we, if we're successful, the award we get. For example, we could just do the intersection, which would be a huge benefit. We could do partial lanes on 41st going north. We could, we could scale the project based on the amount of funding that's available. Uh, the second project is the Kennedy Drive sidewalk project from Sir Francis Avenue to Park Avenue. This is a project that received $25,000 in funding um, in the capital improvement program when the budget was approved. It is a, which is not enough to build the projects, enough to get the design work done. So this, uh, if we apply for a grant for that, it would provide the funding to construct the project. Um, it's a project that goes, like I said, from St. Francis and it takes you down the hill to Park Avenue, so then you can cut through New Brighton Park to get to the McGregor Park. That's kind of the goal of that one. Another pavement uh, rehabilitation project you may want to consider is Capitola Road. Um, we had input during the CIP hearings during budget session that Capitola Road from Claire's to 30th is in need of repaving, um, or portions of it are. Um, so we could do that. Um, I'm not mentioning the estimates cost here, but the Estimate for that project is about $500,000. Um, the sidewalk project from Kennedy, I'm backing up here, is about $150,000. And the 41st Avenue paving is um, about a million and a half if we were to do it, everything we could. Um, Capitol Ave, we're actually looking at probably trying to do some dig out repairs on Capitol Road, I'm sorry, um, as part of the ongoing um, pavement management program we're putting together right now. So we will be addressing some of that, but it's um, certainly something we could consider for this project. Another sidewalk project, which has been on and off a, the CIP list of interest is the McGregor Drive sidewalk project. This came up when we built the McGregor Drive, or McGregor Park. Um, there's not great pedestrian access to that unless you cut through New Brighton uh, State Park. This would build a sidewalk uh, along McGregor on the south side, so on the park side of the uh, of the road. It's a very expensive sidewalk. Um, there's basically a section of probably 200 feet long that would need to be on a bridge. It's actually considered a cantilevered sidewalk. Um, so it'd be an expensive project. I think we estimated a million dollars to move forward with that, 750 to a million dollars on that project. And then the final project that we looked at was the Washburn Avenue sidewalk project. This is a project that goes from Park Avenue up to New Brighton School. It was identified as a, not a high priority, but something that would be good to build in the Safe Routes to School program uh, report that was put together uh, for the New Brighton Middle School that we partnered with the school to prepare. 
So that's a project that's out there and something uh, we may want to consider. Yeah. All right. So the schedule uh, for the grant applications, the applications are due about two weeks on October 5th, week and a half. Um, the award decisions are expected in December and the funding will be available generally in mid-2002. It varies on, on which funding source. So if I go back to the list of projects, what we're recommending um, is the first two projects, the 41st Avenue Pavement Rehabilitation, just because something we know is out there and we need to do and it's scalable. And then the Kennedy Drive sidewalk project, simply because it's partially funded already in the CIP program. And this would allow us to uh, move forward if we were successful. I can't say that we'll be successful with two projects. I think it's worth submitting two projects just to make sure we do. I know the, the larger agencies submit three or four projects. So for us to submit two projects isn't unreasonable. Um, more than that, I think, would be unnecessary. So the recommendation tonight is to authorize public works to submit grant applications for the Santa Cruz Regional Transportation Project for the following projects, 41st Avenue Pavement Rehabilitation and Kennedy Drive Sidewalk. And with that, that's my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions from council? Thanks, Mayor Story. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Um, yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, uh, these are uh, all, you know, I think very good projects. It's hard to pick between them. But uh, I had a couple of questions. Um, one is, you know, um, recently in the past, we had been talking about our pavement management program and had prioritized uh, certain streets uh, to focus on. Um, and I, and I noticed that, I mean, that um, most of those priorities, except I, I believe the 41st Avenue was on there, but um, the um, Kennedy Drive sidewalk project was not one of those. And so I was wondering why we weren't uh, applying for those uh, projects that we had already prioritized. Um, and my second was concerning um, the local match. Um, and um, whether it's going to be cash or in time, um, and when we may have to uh, need to, to budget for. So as far as the um, projects we selected, the 41st, page, 41st Avenue has been a priority project in our payment management program. A lot of the other ones are being addressed under current um, allocation of the project we're working on with this year's funding. Um, I'm, I'm I don't have that list right in front of me right now, but I think we have addressed most of the streets on that priority list. Uh, I know the council did add Capitola Road to that list in hearings this weekend, so or this last year. So those two projects are there for your consideration. As far as the, the match, um, we will need to budget any required matching funds as part of our budget process, whether that's a mid-year or at the uh, budget year uh, hearings in June. So we'll, we'll address those as the funding becomes available. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's go ahead and take this to public comment. If you'd like to make a comment, send an email now to public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Or to speak, please raise your hand now by clicking uh, on reactions, then clicking raise hand in your Zoom application or by dialing star nine or six, depending on your landline or mobile phone. Our moderator will unmute you and you will have up to three minutes to speak. Mayor Brooks, I do not see anybody um, with their hands raised in the meeting and I do not have any emails on this item. Okay. We'll bring this back to council for further comments and deliberations. Who would like to begin? Vice Mayor Story. Thank you once again, Mayor Brooks. Um, well, I would just like to begin by uh, moving uh, the staff recommendation to authorize the Public Works Department to submit a grant application uh, to the uh, Santa Cruz County RTC uh, for the 41st Avenue Paving Rehabilitation Project and the Kennedy Drive Sidewalk Project. 
Okay, we have a first, and we have a second from Council Member Peterson. Any other comments or questions? Okay, may I have a roll call, please? Council Member Kaiser. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. All right, let's move on to item 8B. This is the digital reader device purchasing policy update. We know a lot of these are going to be coming up in our next council meetings. We're going to see these policies coming towards us. So here's our first one. Jamie, is this your item? Good. Thank you, Mayor okay. Brooks, members of the council. Try to share my screen. Here we go. Okay, so last meeting, council requested a review of this policy. Um, it's the digital reading device purchasing policy. It was originally adopted in 2011 and then updated in 2018. The goal of the policy really was focused on reducing paper waste and administrative staff time associated with printing agenda packets. Uh, we estimated back in 2011 that the city was printing about 85,000 pages a year um, on paper for the agenda packets for the Planning Commission and the City Council. I, I recall one, as one person, uh, often Friday afternoons in the copy room where like literally there was smoke coming out of the copy machine. <laughs> it was a major endeavor every Friday afternoon putting these packets together. And so the intent behind the policy was to, um, this was in 2011 when the technology was sort of, was just developing where people could purchase iPads or small laptops, things like that, and uh, review the agenda packets digitally. So the way the pro uh, policy was structured, any council member or any staff member who receives an agenda packet could get a $250 reimbursement that was intended to offset about half the cost of a digital device uh, in exchange for going paperless for two years. And we did a bit of analysis at the time and demonstrated that that would be a cost neutral proposal for the city given the reduced staff time and paper costs associated with the printing of the packets. So today the policy has largely succeeded. Uh, we only print at this point two agenda packets, which is down from the 18 back in 2011. Um, one for a council member and one for the public lobby at City Hall. Uh, three council members have received the reimbursement and one council member has voluntarily elected not to receive a, pack, a hard copy of the packet and all staff members now uh, receive the packet digitally. And then the Planning Commission at this point is all receiving the packets digitally as well. So there's, you know, th this policy was created as sort of a paper waste reduction tool. It's largely succeeded. Um, if we wanted to update this policy with the same sort of focus, we cl clearly could go to maybe potentially a longer term and a more of a reimbursement. Um, in 2011, technology, I think, was moving so quickly in the iPad. The first generation iPad was significantly improved by the second generation iPad, and it didn't seem reasonable to have expect them to last that long. I think now a four-year timeline is feasible. Um, we could also allow for exceptions where council members maybe who got the reimbursement or staff members could request some number of printed packets a year if they just saw some specific issue that they really wanted to get a hard copy of the packet. Uh, and then there's other options. Uh, frankly, we could change the focus of the packet of the policy to focus more on technology access, things like that. So with that, I'm available for questions. Um, I think the step, oh, I do want to note that we have identified a minor correction in the form that's attached to the policy that needs to be cleaned up to make it clear that it's not a stipend, it's the reimbursement. Um, but other than that, there's no other changes that staff has really identified uh, that need to be made to the policy at this time. Is that Any available questions? for questions? Any questions from council? Okay, we'll go ahead and move this to public comment. If you'd like to make a comment, send an email now to public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Or to speak, please raise your hand now by clicking on reactions, then clicking raise hand in your Zoom application, or by dialing star nine or six on your landline or mobile phone. 
Our moderator will unmute you and you will have up to three minutes to speak. Mayor Brooks, I do not see any attendees with questions on this item and I do not have any emails on this item. Okay. We'll bring this back to council for further comments and deliberation. Um, I'll just go ahead and start though, because I was the one who asked for this to, to come. So I just wanna give council some background and some thoughts on where this was coming from. Um, you know, technology in and of itself has changed a lot since 2011. And we often, um, we all access our, our documents and such in many different ways. and. Um, such as our phones or different types of devices like a computer or a laptop or um, and there's all sorts of tech tools that we need also to um, to access our, our um, city information and our packets and so I wanted to be able to bring that forward or bring it to, you, to all of you for um, for a discussion because what I'd ideally like to see is a an annual reimbursement to council um, to not just for digital readers, but a overall techno technology reimbursement for council members. So that's what I was thinking that, a, and I'll throw it out like a $250 annual reimbursement for technology to access city info and agenda packets is what I was thinking. And so I just wanted, that's where, what I was thinking before when I brought this forward. So um, if anyone has any additional thoughts or comments, council member Peterson. Yeah, so I guess I'm, I'm trying to understand the different options and what's in the staff report and what you're recommending. And, and um, so uh, Jamie had mentioned that it would be a uh, reimbursement and not a stipend, but it said $500 for four years. So that means someone buys their own and then they get up to $500 back. So they have to do it first. Okay. And then what you're suggesting, Mayor Brooks, is that every year council members just get $250. No, it would be in re a reimbursement. So like our, you know, our laptops don't last that long anymore. We fill them up with, with, I'm going to mess it up, megabytes and kilobytes and stuff like that. So I feel like it's necessary for our technology to be updated on a more regular basis. And so, you know, if our computer crashes, we could submit for reimbursement to get it fixed to update our technology or our phones, we access phones or our, you know, they have those big giant flip phones now that you can see like a notepad. And so I would like for council to have more options for reimbursement versus it just saying a digital reader. Um, so $250 for technology and if that's a web or, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like the idea in general of it being, being considered more of a technology reimbursement rather than just a digital reading device. Because as it is, I'm happy with using my laptop to, to review the agendas. But one of the problems that I have is that in order for me to highlight the agenda stuff, I need a specific kind of Adobe um, Acrobat program or something that I don't Me have. Too. And so that's what I used to like about having hard copies is that I could highlight things in, in the agenda. And now I have to take hard copy notes of everything I want to come back to that's on the agenda because I don't have the technology to highlight it. Um, so I like the idea of it being more of a technology reimbursement. I think it might take a little bit more time though for us to determine what counts in that. Um, um, or, or maybe not. Maybe that's easier and I'm just making it more complicated. Um, I, I'm, I'm up in the air on the 500 for four years or 250 a year. I'm, I'm, I, I would like to hear more from other council members on that, but I am in support of this being more of a reimbursement for general technology that we need in order to um, fulfill our, our roles as council members and, and receive the packet in this way, um, as opposed to it being just for a digital reading device. Councilmember Kaiser. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Um, I kind of piggybacking on what Kristen's questions were. Um, so it, say we're buying like software or something, would there have to be a purchase every year of something that we would be reimbursed for to get the reimbursement? Or is it, or do you just buy a brand new laptop at year one and then you're reimbursed across the next 
two years or five year, four years, sorry. Um, that, I, I mean, I, I don't have like a number in mind or anything. I'm just like unclear as to like, sure. if it's just how, a product or what. How I was envisioning that is we get a certain allotment for like travel, right? Yeah. And when we use it, we then get reimbursed for it. So every year we have a $250 technology reimbursement available to us to utilize for updating our software, for buying a new device, for, um, you know, our phones, because I know I use my phone to read, and we can submit that, those receipts to the city up to $250 a year. Okay. And so then the following year, your software expires. You can submit again your your laptop crashes and you need support for technology, you can submit that. So it's a $250 annual reimbursement for technology in order for us to access our digital agenda packets and other information that comes from staff. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I think that's cool. I think that's moving in the right direction, at least like <laughs> for the environment <laughs> and, our, yeah. and our staff as well. So yeah, totally. Thank and you. it's expensive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Vice Mayor Story, did you have any comments or feedback for us? Well, thank you, Mayor. I, I actually did not. Um, oh, <laughs> I was but, calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you did, um, no, I, I support your idea. I, I think it's reasonable that, um, you know, technology moves so quickly. Um, and um, and to confess, I'm the one council member who gets paper packets, um, and just for my own personal reasons and uh, for the sake of my eyes. Um, but um, I think it's reasonable to have an annual reimbursement uh, to be able for council members to be able to uh, keep up um, with the technology and and being able to um, you know um, absorb. Uh, the, agenda, the agenda, and based on what it costs, I, I think to print the packet, it seems like 250 a year is reasonable. So thank you. That's my input. Thank you. Sam, I just went digital, so don't feel bad about being the only one. I feel you. The paper. <laughs> so, did, so do I. So did I, and I missed my paper packet. <laughs> yeah, same. Uh, okay, Jamie. So I have one question about this concept. Um, so right now, the way the policy is crafted is anyone who is used traditionally would have gotten an agenda packet. Is this focused more on council members as a council member reimbursement or is the intent to keep it as the same eligibility criteria? I'll, I'll throw some thoughts out there and then see what other council, I know that this was for staff as well, is that what you're, or just for planning commissioners? Well, yeah, so originally it was council planning commissioners and then staff who received the packet. Um, and I mean, you know, I think I'm sort of agnostic either way. I think you could say, well, this aims, you know, provide more of a reimbursement for council members since there's a more significant expectation on them. You could leave the existing policy alone, uh, and then just update this other element for council. You could also just say it applies to the same group who'd be el who have been eligible for it in the past. Council, any council comments? I think leave it up to the same availability for who it's been allotted to. I think it's nice. I mean, my comment would be that we are in a new digital age and we're accessing information differently. We're, yes, we're in the middle of a pandemic still and we might be here for a long time. And so um, we might have to continue to do this and it might be hard for people to access. And, you know, I think that staff and commissioners most certainly deserve this as well. Um, okay, anyone interested in moving this forward? I can make the motion to allot a reimbursement of $250 per year per council member, staff member that would be otherwise receiving a paper copy of the agenda um, to keep up with the technology and 
we lower our paper waste and our staff work. Um, if I may, can we uh, include the uh, planning commissioners in that motion? Oh, sorry. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. And with that, I'll, I'll second the motion. Thanks, Sam. Okay. Chloe, do you have a clear motion? Yes, I, I do. Um, basically, following the conversation, but allotting a annual $250 reimbursement to all those that already qualify under the current policy. I think that um, we have everything we need. Thank you. So I'll do a roll call vote. Is that okay? Thanks. Great. Councilmember Kaiser. Hi. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. Thank you. Okay, this item passes unanimously. We'll now move on to item 8C. This is considered the selection of payment engineering Inc. for on-call pavement management design services and Kimberly Horn for on-call traffic engineering and civil design services to support capital improvement project design and implementation. Good evening again, Mary Council. And sharing my screen. There we go. So as you said, the item before you is the consultant collection. We go through this about every five years um, for public works to implement the capital improvement program. Just quick background, the, the implementation of the capital improvement, part, capital improvement program requires consultant services to assist public works staff. Um, you know, we don't have traffic engineers on staff. I'm the only registered civil engineer on staff. Um, we just, we need assistance from consultants to put this all together. Public Works issued a request for qualifications from this interested firms. We received three responses, and based on the review of those call, uh, statements, we interviewed two of the firms. Uh, we're recommending hiring both of those firms for different roles. Um, we're recommending that the firms be selected for on-call services for up to five years. This is what we've done in the past. Work on an authorized project or task is based on the scope of services re requested and approved by public work staff. So we basically, as we go through the CIP program and approve new projects, a uh, certain portion of that is always set aside for engineering functions. We then, as we work on that project, would request a, a what amounts to as a proposal on putting that project together. We we find that scope of work with either of the two firms and we then issue them a purchase order. So it is definitely an on-call. We still control you know, the amounts that are being uh, awarded and it's always within the capital improvement program. So the first firm we're recommending tonight is Pavement Engineering Incorporated. This is a new firm to the city. Um, they are will complete the pavement management program updates and design services. They have 30 years experience and they are a single focus firm um, and they only work on road construction, preservation, and rehabilitation projects. They're not multidisciplinary. Every one of them are uh, engineers on staff, uh, has quite a bit of experience in pavement management and road restoration. We've met several times with them. We've uh, actually done two walks with them on uh, our existing roads, uh, getting their assistance and be honest, they've already helped us out on 41st Avenue just by walking and giving us some idea for the grant application, which you approved earlier tonight. Uh, their initial services, uh, as we mentioned, as we, I think we've mentioned this during the CIP program, is uh, we will be updating the city's pavement management program. Uh, typically, when we go through an update, we would have the streets re, re inspected so that we get a new pavement condition index. I'm trying to curtail that a bit this time. They're actually going to go through and just reallocate um, the condition. They're not going to do an inspection, but they're going to look at the pavement condition and put them into categories so that they ultimately can better identify which streets in the need, need to be addressed before they require uh, complete reconstruction. And based on that re-evaluation re of our pavement management program, they're going to develop a five-year paving schedule. 
that'll be a lot of help to us as we move forward. We can project where we're going to be paving. Uh, it's been more of a year-to-year -year basis that we've done that right now. And they'll also be providing design services for the funded paving projects as we move forward. The other pro firm we're recommending is Kinley Horn, uh, and that's for civil design, sidewalks, uh, other types of projects they're, they're actually working on. Uh, the Clare Street right now, and um, have worked on the, the roundabout, although that's on hold. And their transportation, we use them quite a bit for um, transportation studies, uh, like we did in the Jewel Box and other areas. Um, they just completed a similar five-year contract with the city. Their services have been excellent. I think they're one of the best responding firms and uh, have the best cost control measures in place and have been a big help to us uh, over the past five years. Um, their traffic engine engineering services are recognized throughout the county, both the County of Santa Cruz and the Santa, Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission uses Kinley Horn for traffic engineering services. So their initial services will include final design of the Clare Street Complete Street Project, initial design of the Kevin E. Avenue Sidewalk Project, so that'll help us with the grant application that you approved earlier tonight for that project and for the Park Avenue traffic calming design project. We have not passed that to them, to them at this point, but we will upon approval of action tonight. So with that, the recommendation is to approve this section of the following consulting firms to provide on-call design services for implementation of the city's capital improvement program for a five-year period, fiscal years 21 through 22 through 26-27. And so the recommended firms are Pavement Engineering Incorporated and amount not to exceed $100,000 for the fiscal year 21-22 for pavement management projects and for Kinley Horn and Associates in the amount not to exceed $100,000 for fiscal year 2021-22 for traffic engineering and civil design projects. And that is my report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Steve. Nice Mary story. Yeah, thank you again, once again, Mayor. Um, Steve, um, I was really pleased to see that the Park Avenue traffic calming um, was on the list of proposed uh, projects for um, uh, Ms. Horn's firm. And I was wondering, um, I mean, when we may be able to expect to see um, a proposed design uh, for that traffic calming. So I suspect um, kind of our priority is trying to knock out the Clare Street project as quickly as we can. But at the same time, we will have to start them working on the uh, Park Avenue. Um, I would say we could have something, some preliminary ideas back to the council. Uh, potentially, you know, it's hard November, December, we don't have a whole lot of meetings, but we can aim for one of the meetings in late November, early December, certainly by January. We could have something to you. That that sounds excellent. Yeah, thank you. Great question, Vice Mayor. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move this um, open this to public comment. If you'd like to make a comment, send an email now to public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Or to speak, please raise your hand now by clicking on reactions below, then clicking raise hand in your Zoom application. Or by dialing star nine or six on your landline or mobile phone. Our moderator will unmute you and you'll have up to three minutes to speak. Mayor Brooks, I do not see any attendees with their hands raised for this item. And I do not see any emails on this item. Okay. So let's bring this back to council for further comments and a vote. Council member Kaiser. Thank you, Mayor. And thanks Steve for the presentation. I'd like to go ahead and move um, to take a recommendation for the two different firms um, working on our street. Okay, we have a motion to adopt staff's recommendation on the item, do we have a second? I'll second. And a second from Council Member Peterson. May I have a roll call, please? Council Member Kaiser. 
Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. This item passes unanimously. We'll now move back to item 7A. This is the consideration for the September 9th, 2021 City Council meeting minutes. I just had an edit on the minutes um, that, did I skip an item? I see Katie coming on board. No, you guys are just ready to go. Okay, let me just, uh, <laughs> let me just um, add that there was a comment missing um, on the item when we were talking about the hotel. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it was noted that I mentioned, I asked that the hotel owners uh, include environmentally strategic plans in their in their building and in their items, like in their bathrooms and what they were offering. So I just want to make sure that that was included in the meeting minutes for item 7A. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. I will amend the minutes. Thank you very much. Do we need a motion, um, Samantha? We do need to approve the minutes. Okay, so we'll Perfect. take this item. Oh, I see her. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Can I have a motion to approve the amendments to include language regarding the environmentally strategic plan for the hotel? So moved. I have a second? Second. We have a first from Vice Mayor Story and a second. May I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. This item passes. We'll now go ahead and uh, revisit item 7F. This is the authorization of the senior plan planner position. Um, Council Member Peterson? Yeah, before we move forward, I'm going to recuse myself from this item because I've learned that I have a personal relationship with one of the applicants. Okay. Hey, we'll see you later. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks. Okay, Vice Mayor Story, you showed interest to pull, or you had a question about this item. Do you want to begin? Yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, and my question is, I was just wondering why um, the authorization is written in the alternative between an associate planner uh, or a senior planner, um, and what was going to determine whether it was one or the other. Um, Council member, story, Mayor, Mayor Brooks, I can, I can give a quick answer to that. Um, currently, the, the, the um, Community Development Department has three different planner classifications, um, assistant, associate, and senior. The senior position has not been filled since the Community Development Director moved to that position. And um, recently, the associate planner left. And because of the uh, tight labor market, um, staff wanted to make sure we could cast a wide enough net to get as many applicants as we possibly could, which I'll be honest, isn't a lot even with both of these positions. Um, currently, the associate planner and assistant planner are approved in the budget. Um, however, we thought that because of the needs of the department, as well as, again, the, the tight market, we wanted to go out there and look to see if there were in addition to people that were looking at this associate planner position, there might be some senior planners available. And based on the applications received and what we're looking at, um, I think the, the department as well as the city believes that probably the best candidates for the position at this point would fit into the senior planner um, classification. And that's why at this point we're requesting the uh, council authorize the city manager and to fill the vacancy at either one of those classifications, not both, just one position at either one, depending on who the finalists are going to be. Does that answer your question? And yeah, I have a better sense of, of what you're, you're trying to accomplish. And I guess my, uh, uh, my uh, next question is, so this is gonna be advertised as a, an associate or senior planner position um, that's so, correct so you'll be in kind of both of those market market pools to the, that's correct we we wanted to, again to cast as big as get as many applicants as we possibly could we don't know who's out there we but we do know that it's a very tight market in this in this 
um, this or in the kind of the mid mid professional level right now. I understand. Yeah. Thank you for that explanation, Mike. And so, so my question is that the, between the two, there's a significant financial change between the two positions from associate to senior. And we've only approved in our budget for associate, and that's when we determined we were able to have a balanced budget and that we weren't going to move into filling any additional vacancies at this time. I, I think there were six or something like that. Um, can you speak to that a little bit um, just and let us know how that will impact our, our budget and and how much and, and so forth? Absolutely, Mayor Brooks. So currently, um, the, the difference between the two positions is just, to sh just below 15%. Um, yes, the, the senior planners, so that's, that's where that number came from. Um, the, the, this, this fiscal year, the actual cost the, will be covered by the, the salary savings because we do not have a senior planner for two months, unfortunately, at the, at the minimum. And so this year, it would be, it, we would not need to amend the budget this year. Um, depending if there was a senior planner hired next year, during the budget process, that that would come through. But the di the difference between you know a step step C to step C between the two is 15 percent. And how does that affect our balanced budget for the next five years? When we did our projections, we had a balanced budget over the five years. I understand this year won't be impacted, but the next four will be. What does that look like? You know, I, I at this point it's a it's about a fifteen thousand dollar cost. Um, City manager, do you need? I, I, I don't. I think it'll have to be taken into account during the next budget process, the next budget hearings. It will have to be taken into account, and I will note that um, in our long-term budget projections, we, traditionally the department has had a senior planner and an assistant or an associate. That is the traditional format. So that is sort of what we generally assume when we project down the long term. Um, we didn't previous this most recent period since uh, uh, Katie moved up from the senior planner position. Um, so I think in the long term, this is the senior planner position is where the city probably should be in terms of workload and everything else. Okay. Well, I know that there's most certainly a need, right? I, that's why you would be, you wouldn't be doing this if there weren't a need. Um, so I appreciate that. I, I'm uncomfortable with the language. If it, there's um, to fill a vacancy at either the senior associate planner classification, maybe we can, I don't know. I, I think I received the clarity. I just want to make sure that's transparent to the community that some, there's going to be some sort of job posting with both. And if you fall within both, you may get the job, I guess is what, depending on their qualifications. But I guess... Uh, is there more of a need for a senior planner? I guess with my, you know, are you really asking us for a senior planner, Katie? I, let me just be straight to the point. Because <laughs> if that's the case, then we should probably resolve that tonight. <laughs> we, we have a very, oh, go ahead, Katie. Yeah, I, I will say, you know, uh, Larry hit on the fact that there's just a really a limited workforce pool out there of applicants to pick from. So a, a senior planner would be ideal within our department. We really do need leadership within the department and the workload with the mall redevelopment, uh, looking at our housing element update in 2023 coming up, um, hotel development, ordinance, ordinance updates to keep up with the state uh, new laws. So there really is a need within our department for a senior planner, but um, this uh, it will allow us to look at a bigger pool of applicants because if we have somebody with, I think uh, within the associate planner, it's up to three years of experience and the senior planner is four. And really they're, they're so closely, so close together in terms of experience levels that opening both seems like our best avenue in order to get somebody who's qualified and has experience. And I'm curious, just one question, because I know I promised council would be done by eight o'clock. Um, my last question is, have you thought about amending the job uh, qualifications in and of themselves for senior planner to move to three years instead of four, or is that a requirement by some sort of, because I mean, it's, it's a better paid position. So could you, could you do that? 
You know, we've talked about updating the job description overall and working uh, on that job description, but no, not, um, we haven't specifically talked about switching the number of years, but that is something that we can work with the union on in order to uh, massage that and change the description. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's go ahead and any other questions? Are we ready to entertain a motion here? Vice Mayor Story? Yeah, thank you. If I may, I'd like to move that we authorize the city managers to fill one vacancy uh, at either the senior or associate plenary classification. I can second that. We have a first and a second to adopt the item 7F. As staff recommendation, may I have a roll call, please? Yes. Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. She's recused herself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Okay. I can't see any of you, so. You can't see. I know. You're I fine. Apologize. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. And Mayor Brooks. Aye. Thank you. Okay, before this item pass, or this item does pass, and then before we close, I just want to let council know we will continue to meet virtually um, until we see our numbers get better. I don't know how else to say it. I hope every single time. Um, so other than that, we'll continue our meetings virtually. 8.03, everyone. We've three minutes passed by my hopes and dreams, but we were pretty darn close. So thank you. We're going to now adjourn this meeting. Have a lovely evening. Good night.